we're gonna cover something that every personal injury doctor should have in their back pocket. So that if an attorney says something to you, you know exactly how to handle that objection in your conversations with these attorneys. So if you're here with me today, what we're gonna cover is mastering responses to the most common objections you may hear from PI attorneys. My name is Mark Slater, been a chiropractor for 25 years, all in the PI space. Mastering responses to common objections from PI attorneys. So let's get started. Here's the one most of you hear all the time. You're talking to a new attorney, a new attorney. He goes, you know what? Yeah, Dr. Slater, I think we can do some work together. You send me one and I'll send you one. How do you handle that? Well, how I would handle that as well, Mr. Attorney, what you're explaining to me sounds like a little quid pro quo. That's called patient dealing. That's kind of illegal and I don't really want to get into that. Uh, however, if you have uh, a client who lives or works near my office, I know that you have a five mile rule. You don't want your client driving more than five miles to the chiropractor three, maybe four times a week. Missed appointments, gaps in care can really impact the case. Secondly, unattached cases. Like if I get an unattached case, meaning they don't have an attorney, I really only send those unattached cases to attorneys I have a good relationship with. Well, what do I mean by that? The attorneys that we have a good relationship with will protect my bill at 100% as much as humanly possible. And they're gonna send me two or three in return for my patient referral. I know that might not make sense to you, but let's talk about it this way. Average case fee for a chiropractor, you're gonna know what that is. It could be 3,000, it could be 5,000, maybe it's 8,000. Average PI settlement for a PI attorney is $26,000. So they're gonna be making three to four X more than you are. So one for one makes no sense. I'll send you one, Mr. Attorney, because you're gonna make possibly more money on this than I am. You guys can hit home runs. I can only hit singles all day long. Uh, therefore, one for one doesn't really do it for me. Secondly, I got preferred attorneys. They're, they love it when I send them unattached cases. So that's how you handle that objection of you send me one, I'll send you one. The next one that you probably hear or have heard before, you're talking to a new attorney, we don't use chiropractors. What I would say immediately after that is what makes you say that? As soon as chiropractors leaves his mouth, we don't use chiropractors, what makes you say that? Hit the ball back in their court, and let them explain. Whatever their lame explanation is, you can say, well, the majority of these cases are soft tissue cases. So sending them to an orthopedic surgeon or a neurologist or you know, interventional pain for injections is really accelerating the care that may be needed for this patient. Mr. Attorney, if you send me the case, we're gonna treat them conservatively the first few weeks. If I can't get them out of pain at about week three or week four, I'm gonna make a proper referral. I'm gonna quarterback this case for you. I'll make sure we'll, we get them to interventional pain or neurology or orthopedics. And we'll always contact you and make sure you have a good relationship with the medical providers that we wanna work with. Okay, so even though you're working with me, secondly, now this is kind of a bonus, if you have a TBI protocol or ligament instability protocol, you know, we get our TBI protocol uh, we get an opinion of a board certified neurologist or neuropsych depending on the test that we run. So a lot of our services and modalities are backed up by a medical opinion, okay? So that kind of sweeps the legs out of, we don't use chiropractors. What makes you say that? That's what should come out of your mouth immediately when they say that, okay? Uh, there may be some attorneys that prefer catastrophic injuries, not soft tissue, right? Um, well, you may want to ask them, well, what happens if somebody calls your office and they don't have a catastrophic injury? They just have headaches, neck pain, back pain. Where do you send those cases? Do you have an attorney from you send this to that you can make an introduction to me for, right? My dad had a friend, he did some PI. The first question he asked is, did anybody die in the accident? I know it sounds a little dark, but he wouldn't take a case unless it was catastrophic. Concerns over patient insurance and billing. Well, let me ask you this. What happens if an attorney says to you, hey, you know what, Dr. Slater? Don't bill the med pay on this. Don't bill the PIP. Bill the patient's health insurance. You ever got that one? Bill the health insurance. Don't bill the med pay. 
So here's how you handle that one. Number one, Mr. Turner, I gotta tell you, auto is primary. If they check uh, auto accident, that this injury was this sustained in a car accident and they check yes, auto is primary. Secondly, Mr. Attorney, I don't think you understand how insurance contracts work for providers. I've signed a contract with United Healthcare, for example. I am contractually bound to collect any unpaid and unmet deductibles and charge your client for a copay every time he walks in to my office. Otherwise, I can be guilty of enticement and the insurance companies can not only kick me off the plan for violating the contract, but they can also audit me. And every single patient, United Healthcare patient that I've had over the past 10 years, they can audit every single one of them and see if I build a health insurance on an auto case. So Mr. Attorney, I'm gonna bill the auto because auto is primary. Basically, when you tell them that you have to collect unmet deductibles and co-pays, that's gonna end the conversation right there because most PI patients aren't gonna use their health insurance. They don't wanna come out of pocket uh, for care for an accident that was somebody else's fault. So that's how you handle that objection there, okay? Here's one. You know what, when I call your office, I always get an answering machine, I get a voicemail, uh, nobody calls me back right away. Docs, if you have voicemail, you are losing business. You've got to do better in your communications. If um, an attorney requests records and you don't get the records to them and it takes two, three, four weeks, 30 days, that's not good communication with the attorneys and they're going to complain about that, right? Communication with your office is inconsistent and unreliable. Right? When they call your office to get something, do you call them back right away? Does it take time? Make sure your communications with attorneys are on point. Very important. Uh, as a PI doctor, you are open 24 hours, seven days a week. You have to have a method to communicate with these attorneys, whether it's a chat feature on your website where people can interact with you and you, you have a chat bot that says, hey, thank you so much for contacting Slater Chiropractic. We've got all your information. We are going to contact you first thing in the morning and handle your handle your issue. Like we have an AI voice responder that'll respond to those chat messages with AI. So if the AI will know exactly what action to take based on what the person responds on that chat message. So those are some of the most common objections we hear in personal injury. If you're in YouTube, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We produce a long form video on personal injury and personal injury marketing every single week to help you grow your personal injury business. Again, I'm Mark Slater with Prime Spine Consulting. Have a great day.